Imagine this, you've just lost 30 pounds. You feel lighter, you feel hopeful. Friends are noticing. You finally took out those jeans that were hiding in your closet for two years. But just as you started celebrating, your body seems to rebel. Suddenly the scale stops moving. Your energy dips, hunger comes roaring back. And before you know it, five, 10, even 15 pounds sneak back on. Sound familiar? I've seen this in my clinic more times than I can count. And for years, like most doctors, I used to shrug and think, well, that's just metabolism doing its thing. Or worse, I used to think patients had lost their discipline. But then a Harvard study came along that made me rethink everything I thought I knew about weight loss and was really driving the body to either hold on to weight or let it go. Here's the short version. This study shows that calories aren't the full story. What we eat, not just how much, can change how many calories you burn after weight loss. And the difference isn't small. Before we dig into it, drop in the comments where you're watching from. I love seeing how this community stretches across the country, even around the world. Now let me tell you a quick story. I had a patient, let's call her Lisa, who worked so hard to lose 25 pounds. She counted calories, exercised, followed all the official advice, and she lost the weight for about six months. Then came the dreaded regain. She felt like a failure, but Lisa wasn't the problem. The plan was, because the plan never accounted for the sneaky ways your metabolism slows down after weight loss. It's like your body has a built-in alarm system. Danger, she's starving me, conserve energy. That's called metabolic adaptation, or what I call hitting the metabolic brakes. So here's where Harvard comes in. In 2018, Dr. Kara Ebling and her team took a group of adults who had already lost about 10% of their body weight and wanted to keep it off. They weren't looking at the first few pounds. They were looking at that critical maintenance phase where most people struggle. Here's what they did. They they fed these participants in a highly controlled way for 20 weeks and split them into three groups. One group ate a high carb diet, around 60% carbs. One group ate a moderate carb diet, around 40% carbs. And one group ate a low carb diet, around 20% carbs. Now here's the kicker. Everyone was given enough food to maintain their weight. Calories were controlled. No one was in a major deficit. Then the scientists measured how many calories they burned using a golden standard method called doubly labeled water and what they found was jaw dropping. The low carb group burned about 200 to 250 more calories per day than the high carb group, even though they were the same weight, eating the same calories. 200 calories a day may not sound like much, but over a year, that's 73,000 calories. That's like the difference between maintaining your weight and slowly regaining those 10 to 15 pounds you worked so hard to lose. And here's my favorite part. They found that people who naturally secrete more insulin, the ones whose bodies overreact to carbs, got the biggest metabolic boost from going low carb. If your insulin tends to run high, Harvard basically handed you a cheat code to keep your metabolism from stalling. Why does this happen? Let me break it down in plain English. When you eat a lot of refined carbs, your insulin spikes. Insulin's main job is to store energy. So when insulin is high, your body basically locks the doors to the fat cells and says, no fuel coming out. We're in storage mode. That means you're burning less fat, feeling hungrier, and your metabolism slows to conserve energy. When you cut carbs, insulin drops. Suddenly, the doors to the fat cells open. Fuel starts flowing. Your body feels safe enough to burn energy again. Your metabolism isn't panicking. Hormones like leptin and ghrelin stabilize, and your thyroid doesn't get the signal to hit the battery saver mode. It's like switching your phone from low power mode to full brightness again. Same phone, same apps, but suddenly it's running like it should. Now to be fair, science is messy. Some researchers argue the fact might be smaller than 200 calories, maybe closer to 100. There are debates about the methodology. But here's the thing, even if it's just 100 calories a day, over months and years, that's enough to be the difference between keeping weight off and sliding right back to where you started. So what do we do with this information? Here's the practical approach. If you've already lost weight or you're planning to, consider these three steps. First, lower your effective carbs. That doesn't mean zero carbs for everyone like us carnivores, but it does mean cutting the refined stuff. Breads, sugary drinks, chips, and even those so-called healthy granola bars. Instead, think steak, 
eggs, fish, and maybe some low carb veggies. Second, prioritize satiety and protein. This is where my patients on carnivore or keto have a huge advantage. When you're satisfied, you naturally eat less without feeling punished. Third, support your metabolism with lifestyle, sleep, stress management, and a bit of movement, especially resistance training, signal your body that it's safe to keep the engine running. Remember, stress and sleep debt can mimic high carb metabolism, slowing your burn. Let me give you a simple day that works for a lot of my patients post weight loss. Breakfast, steak and eggs cooked in butter. Lunch, salmon with avocado. Dinner, lamb burger patties with a little cheese and maybe a side of non-starchy greens. Sprinkle in electrolytes and water, just not too close to bedtime if you don't want to wake up at 2 a.m. I have to be honest, when I first saw this study, it shook me. You know, in medical school, I was trained for years to think weight loss was simple math. Calories in, calories out. But here was Harvard showing us that hormones, especially insulin, can bend the math. And suddenly, all the patients who failed diets in the past, they weren't failures at all. They were just fighting biology with the wrong strategy. So if you've ever lost weight and felt that wall slam in your face, this is your permission to stop blaming yourself. Your body was trying to protect you. Now you know how to work with it instead of against it. Calories matter, but hormones decide how your body responds to those calories. That's why I always focus on root cause fixes. Stabilize insulin, repair the metabolism, and the weight follows. And if this video reframed weight loss for you, do me a favor, hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't, and drop a comment below. Have you ever lost weight only to watch it creep back despite doing everything right? I want to hear your story. And if you want to take a deeper dive, watch the next video here or subscribe to my channel here. Thanks for watching and remember, protect your nest, protect your health, and let's keep fighting the root causes together.